Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and this video is about First Trimester Pregnancy Ultrasound Reporting. We will see how to write ultrasound reports for first trimester pregnancies starting with a 5 week pregnancy. The report starts with patient information. We will write the LMP that is the date of last menstrual period and after that we can write the uterus position whether it is antiverted or retroverted. Next we will write the findings. We will only look at singleton pregnancies. We are not including twin pregnancies in this video. So we will start by writing a single gestational sac seen in the uterus and then we can write the size of the gestational sac and after that we can write no fetal pole or yolk sac visualized at this time because at 5 weeks we do not usually see the yolk sac or the fetal pole and in the end we can write no evidence of subchorionic hemorrhage or other abnormalities. This is the impression. You can write the size of the gestational sac and also mention the weeks. And after that, you can write no fetal pole or yolk sac is visualized at this time, no subchorionic hemorrhage or other abnormalities are detected. Follow up imaging is recommended in one to two weeks to assess for fetal development. Here is an example report of a six week pregnancy. We write the patient information first, that will include the LMP and the uterus position. These are the findings. You can also start the report by writing the approach transabdominal and transvaginal ultrasound examination was performed, demonstrating a gestational sac measuring approximately 5 mm in diameter, located within the endometrial cavity. A yolk sac is seen within the gestational sac and a fetal pole is identified measuring approximately 6 mm in length consistent with a gestational age of 6 weeks. Fetal cardiac activity is not yet identified at this stage. Here is the impression early intrauterine pregnancy measuring approximately 6 weeks gestational age with a gestational sac, yolk sac and fetal pole identified. Absence of fetal cardiac activity at this stage may be due to the early gestational age and further follow up is recommended to confirm viability. Here is a 7 week pregnancy. These are the findings. You can write the single gestational sac seen in the uterus and then you can write the size of the fetal pole or embryo and then you can write the fetal heart rate which in this case was 138 beats per minute and there was no evidence of subchorionic hemorrhage or other abnormalities. The yolk sac is seen within the gestational sac. Here is the impression. A viable intrauterine pregnancy of 7 weeks and 0 days with a fetal pole measuring 10.5 mm and a fetal heart rate of 138 beats per minute. No subchorionic hemorrhage or other abnormalities are detected. Here is an 11 week pregnancy 
This is the patient information, age 29, Gravida 2, which means this is the second pregnancy, Para 1, which means the patient had one delivery before this pregnancy. And this is the LMP. In the findings, you can write the fetal age, the crown rump length, the fetal heart rate, placenta location, and amniotic fluid volume. After that, you can write about fetal anatomy, all fetal anatomical structures are grossly normal, including the brain, spine, heart, stomach, and limbs. This is the impression, a singleton intrauterine pregnancy corresponding to 11 weeks and 2 days gestational age, no sonographic evidence of fetal abnormalities, placenta is located in the fundus, adequate amniotic fluid volume. This is a 12 week pregnancy. Here is the size of the uterus. A single live intrauterine pregnancy is seen with a fetal heart rate of 155 beats per minute. Fetal biometry is consistent with a gestational age of 12 weeks and 3 days. After that, you can write about fetal anatomy, the nuchal translucency thickness, and the amniotic fluid volume. And in the end, you can also write about the cervix, which will be closed in normal cases. Here is the impression, a singleton live intrauterine pregnancy at 12 weeks and 3 days of gestational age with normal fetal anatomy. Nuchal translucency thickness is within normal limits. No sonographic evidence of fetal anomalies. No abnormal fluid collections. Thank you so much for watching, please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos.